Hello, I'm Mari of So Disorganised and welcome to my very messy crafty space. Um, so I guess I'll start with what I'm wearing. Um, I am just wearing my modified Neela Neela jacket um, from Bar Barra Studios. Like it's Neela, but I use the sleeves of the DD pattern from Fiber Mood, just because I quite like the idea of a cuff, and I didn't like how like the drop went down to here and I wasn't really a fan but you know um so as you can see in the title this film was about turkey and I got back two days ago and since then everything's just been so cold so I'm pretty much just living in sweaters and track suits at the moment um sorry my kids Liam's meant to be watching the kids but you know <laughs> I think she's gone okay so if any of you follow me on YouTube um you will know the purpose on YouTube or on YouTube. If any of you follow me on Instagram, you will know the purpose for this video. Um, I have recently been to Turkey to get my my teeth fixed. And um, yeah, so I'm I'm quite a confident person. I've always um I've never really been that bothered about my body, um, my body, like what size I am and that, and like I'm I've been very blessed with quite clear blemish free skin so I've always been quite a confident person but the one thing for the past few like six years or so that has really bothered me is my teeth and the funniest thing is is when I actually told my family that I was getting my teeth sorted because it's not something I've ever really talked about because I'd never really want to draw attention to them like they all had the same reaction like what's wrong with your teeth your teeth are fine which actually made me see it in a different light but for me, it's always been something I've been hyper fixated on. Um, so I've always had like my in my side incisors have always been really small, um, and they caused me a lot of problem. I used to get a lot of toothache. Um, they used to be really sensitive to like hot, cold, anything like that. So I went to the dentist, and he basically said, "There's nothing that can really be done about them. Um, if they're causing you that much trouble, we'll have to remove them. But because they're so small." the hole should naturally close over itself um because they were kind of they they would just they were like not much bigger than milk teeth they were always really really small um the funniest thing is talking to my mum she said she had the same problem so i'm i'm guessing it's genetic um but yeah so he removed them and i kind of i didn't it didn't sound right that you know the hole would grow over but i'm not a dentist so i listened um and what instead happened was my front two teeth started splitting and leaning um, and the gap didn't close. So I had a gap there with like leaning two front teeth and I hated it. And like if you look back for any photos of my Instagram, you'll see like I never smile with my mouth open. I used to be really self-conscious of candid photos and like smile is such a big thing because... Um, you know, everybody says, oh, you know, they had just a warm, welcoming smile, like, be like beautiful tea for a thing. And I just always felt like I'm always a happy, outward, excited, bubbly person. But I felt like it kind of quelled my personality because I couldn't smile. And I know that sounds ridiculous to like a lot of people. But when you're that hyper aware of something on your body, you like fixate on it and you like, and even if nobody else notices to you, you're constantly thinking like that's all people are going to notice. And like, and I would always notice people's teeth first because I hated mine. So I was like, oh, if I'm always noticing it, people must be too. And it's really only when I told my family that I was getting it done that they were like, oh, it doesn't look like anything's wrong. But it's like, but you know, for me, it really did feel like it was really interfering with my life and my confidence. And I've been looking into it for a little while to get it done, but it's always been out of my price range. Um, but recently I ha I came into a bit of money. Um, I won't go into the ins and outs, but like my nan, like bless her, sent me, um, sent me some money. And I was like, right, I've got the money in my account now. Get it booked straight away and get it done. And um, yeah, so I went to, booked into Izmir. I did it through a dental company in the UK um for an agency in the UK I talked to them on the phone they put me in contact with several different dental clinics and I just I there was no real um 
nothing really stand out that made this one over the others other than the fact that there was like um I can't even remember the other countries I were but I lived in Turkey for like um that 10 years ago I did two years living in Turkey and I was like oh I'd like to go back to Turkey and I'm a bit more comfortable with the language and you know they just seem really nice so I was like all right I reached out to that one I sent them photos of my teeth they didn't need x-rays or anything but it was kind of of the caveat of this is a price but if we find more it might cost more um i fl i paid for the flights but they covered my hotel they covered everything like from transfers and that and in total without the flight the um dental surgery cost me three thousand five hundred pound which when you look at the prices in the uk i would have been looking about forty thousand because these are all crowns um it's not implants it's crown like implants cost a bit more but um i got like top and bottom crowns and when you're looking at getting that done in the uk it costs like around forty thousand. so to me i'm like that is just ugh, so cheap so much cheaper so much more affordable and like my mum said like if it makes me happy and it boosts my confidence then it's it's a hundred percent worth paying the money and getting it done and that's that's how i felt is like i know that to me like it feels life-changing and i know that seems like i'm you know being like hyperbolic or being a bit over exaggerating but for me it is because it's so nice now i mean because i've been so hyper aware of my teeth i'm not really bothered about the rest of my body and like you know if it gets flabby blah 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 and it's nice that i built confidence in the other areas of my body that now i've got this one thing that i was self-conscious about i'm like i'm really happy with the rest of me um because like all my attention was fixed on my teeth and now that's done i don't really i've never really expended the rest of the energy on the rest of my body um so yeah it's really nice i'm i'm still getting used to them in my mouth um so i'm still a little bit lispy and they're a little bit sensitive um but actually the recovery's not been too bad at all but basically yeah i went in um on the first day so they filed down my teeth which was really freaky like honestly it was terrifying and it still kind of freaks me out the thought about it now but i mean you can't if you're gonna if you're gonna either remove your teeth or they file them down if you're getting implants or crowns so i was like right fine that's fine they did it they did a really good job they were so lovely then i had these plastic teeth fitted which looked huge um they they look kind of like dentures um and i felt like i was wearing my nan's teeth but they they still look good but they were a lot whiter than these so like i looked a bit like um if anybody watches friends i looked a bit like ross when he over whitens his teeth and you know when he's like in the black light and he's like that or like you know if you don't watch friends and i looked a bit like rylan um but we decided to go for a more a less white shade like a more natural shade because like you they show you these little cards with the shades on and they have like a load of yellow teeth for some reason and then like four different white ones and i couldn't really see the difference between them because it's like one tooth color until they were in my mouth and then because they were only temporary we scaled it down a bit and while these are white i love them i think they look so natural they fit really comfortably in my mouth um but the whole process was so smooth they were really professional really nice and yeah i mean the whole the whole thing was just so good i cannot fault it i'm so happy to have it done and i'm smiling a lot more and i i just feel a lot more confident i'm so excited you know to move forward from this um but yeah i mean if you have any questions please put them in the comments i'm i went into this with absolutely no idea what to expect and i i didn't find that kind that stressful because i'm one of those people where i'd rather not know and cross those bridges when i get there because otherwise like my mind just goes crazy and um i i overthink everything so um but if you like if you have any questions if you're thinking about it done or you're just curious like put the questions below because um yeah i'm more than happy to answer everything and like i had a really good experience and i'm really really happy with the results and i feel really good and i will be bringing you a lot more conf confidence i will be bringing you a lot more content now that i feel like i can talk and not just be hyper fixated on my mouth 
Um, but yeah, that is basically it in a nutshell. Like, Izmir was a bit, it was a built up city. I'm such a country bumpkin that, um, like, I found it a bit much. I, to be fair, I just, I spent a lot of the time in the spa attached to the hotel. Um, because I didn't really want to go too far in case I had to be called back in for work. Liam came out with me, bless him, and he managed to get a few trips in. But we went to a couple museums, um, ate really good food. Oh, I found the nicest vegan restaurant that did like vegan doner kebabs. And oh my god, like I've never eaten meat. I've been a veggie all my 30 years. But Liam said that yeah, if he <laughs> if it was he was drunk and it was 3 a.m. he was like, Yeah, it's a real deal. Like, you know, obviously who who gets a kebab when they're sober. And he was like, Yeah, if somebody gave me this at 3 a.m., I'd think it was me. I was like, Well, you know, that's that that works for me, and it was delicious. So yeah, it was it was a good trip. We were there for a week. By the end of it, I was just gagging to come home. Um, you know, eating, I, I eating's been fine. I've been eating softer things, um, like pasta and that. Although they say you know, like after forty eight hours, you can eat everything. Like my gums are still a bit sensitive, and I'm just being a bit overcautious. Um, like I'll be, I, I think I just kind of aware, like you know, what's in my mouth. But, I mean, after a few weeks, I'm sure I'll be fine. I've managed to eat some chocolate. You know, I'm happy with that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, anyway, like I said, that is it. Any comments, put them down. But now, moving on to the bit that I'm sure a lot of you are actually here for. And not just about my teeth. Fabric shopping. Oh, my gosh. Turkey and fabric shopping. I wish I was sewing 10 years ago when I lived in Turkey. Because... The fabric there is so cheap, it's so lovely, and there is so much of it. Like, when I first went, because um, I, I, I had the intention to go fabric shopping there, but there are a lot of bridal shops there. Like, every third shop is a bridal shop or a phone shop. Um, and I actually found out why, because apparently a lot of the top designers live in Izmir, so every year they do, like, a big event to showcase these bridal dresses. And I didn't... I wish I'd got footage of it, because some of them were just amazing. It was all, like, intricate lace, beading. They had them in, like, burgundies, emerald greens. And, like, I saw one with, like, feathery frills on it. It really, really incredible. Um... But yeah, so I went into a few fabric shops there and they were like, oh no, we only cater to wedding designers. So I was like, yeah, oh, I don't really want that. But then I went to the market and we spent ages um, looking for a fabric shop. And like I kept walking past all these stalls of clothes and they were trying to get me in. I was like, I can't remember the Turkish word for fabric now. It's like, it begins with a K, but I was saying like, trying to like, like the universal sign for something. I was like, no, fabric. And they're like, ah, pointing me like, oh, over there. And I was like, we walked for ages. And I was like, to Liam, I was like, like, were they pointing me in the direction of the fabric shop? Or were they just telling me to go away? Because we could not find it. But then we got chatting to this nice man. And um, he like literally just toured us over to the fabric shop. Like afterwards, it was it was really nice. And afterwards he just asked if we wanted to look around his shop. And I was like, yeah, no, that, that's perfectly fine for me. You took me to fabric, I'll have a look around your shop. Um, and it was beautiful. I will put some footage in now. Um, and I got a few fabrics there. So, um, yeah, I will, I went back twice. So what I'll do is I will just show you um, the little fabric I got in both visits. So I went there once and I wanted to make sure that what I got would fit in my suitcase. And then I had to go back because there'd been some fabric I was eyeing up. And when I realised I could just about squeeze it in, maybe had a bit more room, um, then I went back. So first I got this gorgeous fabric, which I love. It's like a... Um, it kind of feels woolen. Wait, I, I want to say it's 100% cotton. It definitely feels natural, but it, it kind of has like a wool um, knitted texture. I don't know if it's showing up here, but it's gorgeous. I love the colours and I don't know what I'm going to make with this. I got two metres of it and I'm wishing I got a bit more now. Um, But I'm thinking something like the Marlowe cardigan, but I was also thinking... Like, it would make a really cute, um, like, v-neck vest. Because, um, like, it looks, it does look knitted. 
so you know like the kind like you know um chunky ribbing around the sleeves and the neck and just going down that you can wear over a shirt or something i thought it'd be really cute like that it's not too thick um i mean it's not shit it, you can't see it is opaque but it does let light through it's it's got a nice drape um like i said not 100 percent sure of the fiber content but i want to say cotton at least like the majority cotton and yeah i absolutely love it it's so so this one funny story once I'd got all the fabric, I didn't actually have room in my suitcase for this. I would have had to cram it down. So I wore it as a scarf. And um, yeah, you, would have, you might have seen that on my Instagram stories, but it kind of looks really cute as a scarf. So I was like, I can get away with this. And um, so, yeah, this came on the plane with me. And I, my sister was my sister was like, I just wear it as a scarf. Just turn it into a scarf for me. I was like, no. No, I'm going to sew this into something gorgeous, of which I don't know yet, but I just love the colours. They had this in a couple colourways, um, but I just love, like, the greens, and I love the pop of colour against the white. So that was the first fabric I was drawn to. And then the next is this 100% cotton twill. So they actually call it gabardine out there. Um, they don't call it cotton twill, and I did. I... I like okay that that's helpful like um because like we have gabardine here but in um my experience of gabardine it's like more of a coating waterproof fabric whereas this i would call either cotton twill or denim and yeah it's got that lovely twill weave and i just loved the fun patterns and i was thinking that it would make a really i got three meters of this and I thought it would either make a really cute pair of dungarees or a jacket and trouser combo. Um, but yeah, I just kind of... Rainbow Fabrics recently had a very similar fabric in viscose, which I ended up actually getting after this. Um, which I think is possibly on the table. Let me have a look. It's a bit light. Um, the, the colours aren't the same, like when it came. But the print is the same. And I thought... It would be really cute to like turn this into a jacket and maybe have this as a dress underneath so different shades but same print although this is a bit of a larger scale print i don't like looking at them now i don't know if the colors go enough for me to do that but um but yeah that was just a fun idea but um yes gorgeous i love the colors i love the kind of muted colors in the green um and then next was this one and i got two or three meters i can't even remember now i can't remember how much all these i know the gabardines um they were cotton twills they were about uh about four to five pound each so really really cheap um yeah, so I wish I honestly I wish I could have got more. I um the shop was called I don't know how to say it. In it's not Inshallah, which I know is a word and I can't remember what it means if I've seen it on films. But it's like that but missing a letter. I will I've got a card, I'll put it down the bottom. Insula or something. I, I can't remember. But yeah. But it was really cheap. I got this and this was like two pound a meter and it's like a viscose linen and the reason i got this was because i'd seen it a while back at rainbow fabrics but i'm but it'd been uploaded a couple times and i kept missing it and i love the purple um i'm not i don't usually go for purple but i just, I just thought this would be a really cute summery print that i can turn into a nice um like button down dress or something like that and yeah um but yeah i just like i liked the um like linen-y type um, texture to it. And I just thought it was really cute. So yeah, I got two or three, I want to say three metres, but I can't really remember. And that was like, yeah, like two pound a metre. So really cheap um, and yet perfect for summer. I also got this. And this is 100% cotton and it's just a, what's it? Old. eyelet is that right is it got a different name an eyelet cotton i don't know but i like the brown i like this kind of like a taupey mushroom brown 
and I'll probably save this till like it's coming into autumn um like when it's still warm but this colour is more applicable and I don't really know what I'm going to make with it a shirt but I got two meters I want to say and it was like one pound fifty a meter so yeah I was like yep snap that up and it's just absolutely gorgeous 100% cotton and you, I know like you can get eye looks here but they can be quite pricey and I just really like the colour so yeah that um that was another one and then the final one I got from the shop um was my absolute favorite i'm so excited to show you this one it was another gabardine and oh look at this how beautiful is this it's got another it's another cotton twill well what they call gabardine and i got three meters of this and this is the one that i wish <laughs> i wish i'd bought less so i could have i would like literally just bought the entire roll because oh, i love it so much i love like the pastely shade on the kind of like off white. I love the yellow flowers. And I am torn between making a pair of dungarees or a jacket. Cause I don't I won't I won't have enough realistically to make both. Um I mean unless I'm really fr frugal. Frugal. Um yeah, sorry, completely I just, I just had I had a bit of a mind space then. But um yeah so what do you think dungarees or um or jacket and i think it's like it'd be really cute it's like a jacket and a pair of shorts um combo but anyway i love that like the problem is there's like five patterns i want to make with this and i only have three meters um so yeah i wish i'd got more i love it so much um yeah anyway Okay, so once that was done, I left and I was, you know, quite tired at that point. And then I stumbled upon what I am guessing is the um, the fabric strip, basically, where like they had an uh, absolute, like I'll, I'll put another video up, but rows and rows and rows of fabric stalls and they were so cheap and they had gorgeous viscose and... It was, I wanted to buy everything, but I, but at this point, I had more than I thought I could fit in my suitcase. I, I'm not, you know, I hadn't actually spent over my budget because it was all so cheap, and um, and I was still within my budget, which is why it was more frustrating because it's like I could buy more, but it's the suitcase room that's restricting me. Um, but I did get a couple fabrics, um, but I got them for like the kids more so than me, um. But yeah, I, oh God, I'd go I'd go back there just to go fabric shopping, like go sorry, turn my glass up. Go when flights are cheap with an empty suitcase and just fill it because oh my god, it's so cheap and stunning. They had they had like loads of amazing specialty fabrics, like loads of faux furs, loads of sequins, and oh I really want to go back and get more. Like my heart is bleeding for the fabric that I could not fit in my suitcase. Um I was very, very tempted to add on another. That is how much I wanted to go back and buy more. I was so tempted to add on another suitcase, go to one of the market stalls, buy a suitcase and just fill it with the fabric. But I didn't. And I'm regretting that now. But in realistically, I know that was probably the wise choice because I got like those are the fabric I still need to sew here. But anyway, I'm waffling. So um, I got a couple of fabrics, like one's for William, like 100% for William. And the other one I got like three meters of because I thought I'll make something for Freya and I'll make something for me. It'll be really cute. But um, I got this. This was actually, I thought what I liked about this was as well. It's like a um, brushed cotton flannel fabric, but it's actually made in Turkey. So I thought that was really cute. Um, It's like a Turkey exclusive. I know you can get like digger fabric here, but I just like the fact that it was a Turkey exclusive and it's like a lovely brushed cotton flannel. So I got two meters of this and I thought I'll make William a pair of pajamas and just maybe like a little warmish summer shirt for like when we get those colder days. And it's just so soft and lovely. And he was obsessed. He loved it. So that was a that was a really good purchase. Um and then the last, yep, the last one. Um because, yeah, I, like I said, I, I did get a fair amount. But I would have got more <laughs> had I been able to get it back. 
Um, the final one was this. And they had this in a few colourways, but I was just, I think I was quite drawn to the pinks and the blues together. And it's 100% cotton. Um, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure I've seen this in the UK, but I mean, this was like £1.50 a metre, so I was like, I'll get it here. And it's a bit stiff. I mean, I'm guessing it'll soften with washing because it, it almost has a wax feel to it, but that's just the stiffness of it. But, um, like I'll wash it, I'll put a load of softener in it. And then if I wash it a few times, I think it will, um, it will soften up quite nicely. And I don't know what I'm going to make, but I also thought it'd be really cute for the, um, blossom sandwich. So fruity challenge. So yeah, that is everything I got in Turkey and the story of my teeth. Um, I hope you've enjoyed. Expect a load more content from me coming going forward because now I've got my confidence back. I wanted to vlog like for a really long time. I love watching vlogs and I, and I love filming vlogs. I love having a platform where I can share more of my sewing because I find Instagrams quite limiting. You can do like reels and photos you can't kind of like waffle on about fabric and properly like share your process in the same way and i and like my teeth are always holding me back from doing that because i was always like so self-conscious doing it and like i'm not so I'm, I'm i'm a really confident person i'm i'm quite comfortable behind the camera so i'm really happy now that i'm at a point where yeah i can do this and feel really good about it so thank you for watching if you like i mean like subscribe do what you want to do i'm not going to force you it'd be nice if you did but you know do whatever um and yeah that was my fabric haul and my teeth journey so thank you so much for watching have a lovely day have a wonderful weekend i'm not sure when i'm going to post this but it's friday now so have a lovely weekend and i will talk to you soon bye